Thank you. Thank you. So beautiful. I've been thinking about it. Does anyone ever really think they're ready? Really. You know, before Moses went into the sea, Dr. Wolf, did Moses think he was ready when God told him that he needed to confront Pharaoh? Mm -mm. No, he didn't. He told God, I think you've got the wrong brother. <laughs> you want Aaron, not me. <laughs> Remember what Sarah did when God told her that she was going to have a baby, even though she was more than 90 years old? She laughed like you just laughed. She thought the whole idea that she would become the matriarch of a people who would go on to change the world was the funniest and most ludicrous idea that she had ever heard. Sarah actually laughed in the face of God's plan for her life. Now, did Jesus' disciples think that they were ready to be without him? No way. They expected that he would be with them to lead them always. The disciples were afraid, they were sad, they were confused when Jesus told them that he would not be among them for much longer. When it happened, some of the disciples gave up their faith. They ran back to Galilee to take up their old life again. They became fishermen of fish once again. Without Jesus directly in front of them, most of the disciples decided that they were done. Done spreading the radical gospel of God's love for all people. At first, they began to think that the whole thing, following Jesus in the first place, had been a big mistake. So they denied him, and they went back to live the life they knew before, the only life they'd ever known without him. But they soon found out that their ministry wasn't over. It was just beginning. In his physical absence, Jesus' followers suddenly became leaders. They didn't think they were ready. They didn't think this was the plan. Yet they went on to build a new way. They went on to spread the idea of God's love and forgiveness throughout the land. It's a message that touches us still all the way in Tulsa, Oklahoma, over 2,000 years later. Nobody ever thinks that they're ready. Six months ago, nobody really thought America was ready to have a black candidate for president. Remember that? It's hard to even remember now. We never really think we're ready until it happens. You know, there's one person in the Bible, when I was thinking about it, who thought he was ready. One person who thought that his victory was assured. You know who that one person was? Goliath. <laughs> Remember what happened to Goliath? We all know what happened to Goliath. Just in case you don't know the story, Goliath lost to a young boy who had faith. When Bishop Pearson told me a few weeks ago that I was the one who was supposed to offer a spiritual home to his family and his church, I reacted the way anyone here would have reacted. I said, really? <laughs> you can't be serious. I'm not ready to step into those shoes, Bishop. And he said, yes, you are. You don't have to wear my shoes. You wear your own shoes. You're ready. And like Moses, I'm thinking, you got the wrong brother. <laughs> thinking, I'm too young, too white, and too uptight.
But Bishop, you kept sharing your prophetic ideas. And I said, you're on fire, Bishop. Moses had a burning bush. I have a burning bishop. <laughs> the lesson, of course, is that when there's a call, when you hear a call for your life, you're supposed to listen. And that's where faith comes in. Do I think I'm ready to lead all souls and New Dimensions churches into a combined future? Mm-mm. Do I feel assured of victory? No way. Mm-mm. Now, I know Bishop says I'm ready, and Dr. Wolf tells me I can do it, but I don't know for sure. What I do know is that I need you if it's going to work. I need you to believe in me and pray for me. And if you do that and come and do your part, I believe we can do it. Now, if this were an Obama rally, everyone would start yelling, yes, we can. Yes, we can. Now, there are plenty of people outside of this church who are saying, no, you can't. They say the world's not ready for such inclusion. You've got old folks and young folks, black folks and white folks. You've got people with their ears pierced, their nose pierced, and who knows what else is pierced. <laughs> You got rich folks and folks who are barely scraping by. You've got folks who like to praise the Lord and folks who seriously are not completely convinced there is a God. You've got liberals and conservatives and independents. You've got straight people and gay people. You've got tax collectors, prostitutes, and Pharisees. <laughs> How can you possibly create a community out of this? Lately, I've actually been looking for a sign. <laughs> Not that Usher sign I saw somebody wearing out there. <laughs> I've been praying that I would experience something that will convince me that this church really is standing at the heart of what will become a powerful new day in the religious life of this city. Some little sign. That's all I've, I've asked. Some example that all souls and new dimensions are meant to be together for this reason in this season. And Bishop, that's not to say that I don't trust in your prophecy about this. I do, but I'm also a Unitarian, so I like a little tangible evidence <laughs> once in a while. Well, guess what happened? I got a sign. It was no 900 foot Jesus. <laughs> but it was big, and it did involve Jesus, and Buddha, and Allah, and Krishna, which are all just different names for the one true God. 